Hello, my CNC brother or sister. I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft, the company you get your CNC router bits from to carve your amazing CNC projects. In this video, I'm going to answer a question from a viewer. It's not a very common question, but it's also something that most people don't think about when they're working with their CNC router. And it has to do when you're putting your CNC router together. So our CNC brother, Roy, asked this question. He said, when you're putting your machine together, how do you know how to set the spindle height on your machine? So I'm gonna tell you the, the rules that I go by so that you understand how to set your spindle up. Now, it can be the spindle or a trim router. You wanna to try to follow these rules. So we're gonna use my alt mill CNC router as a reference. And this is something you're gonna follow no matter what CNC router you get. The first thing to take into account and notice is the maximum clearance between the spoil board and the lowest point of your gantry. So in this case, the physical lowest point of my gantry is the bottom of the Z carriage. So the Z carriage is what carries the spindle and moves things back and forth. What I want to accomplish is to get the maximum depth I possibly can get out of my spindle while also getting the maximum clearance above it. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to move my spindle all the way up. And we have about an inch between, maybe an inch and a half, between here and here. And the spindle is mounted about halfway in a bracket. What I want to do now is take the spindle all the way down and make sure I get the max stroke. Now, I want to tell you why I put the spindle up this high is because when we put a router bit in, we generally have an average length that is sticking out. Most often we are using these type of end mills right here. They have a one inch depth of cut. So we wanna put that in and I'll just generally give it a little tighten one-handed since I'm holding the camera. And I'm going to look at it along this plane so the, the router bit is in at the proper depth. The, in other words, the shank is uh, up in it as far as it should be. Some people like to have their shank sticking way out to try to get as much depth as you can. You don't want to do that. Anyway, as we get down on this plane here, the router bit is actually just about an eighth of an inch above this part of the CNC. So the bit, is going to be give me that maximum clearance. The reason I want max clearance is if I want to flatten a really thick slab. Now, the other thing I want to make sure of is will the router bit be able to come all the way down to the spoil board and beyond? So I want that router bit to go all the way down and I actually would like the this collet nut to be as close to the spoil board as possible. Once I get that, then I know I have max travel. So I'm going to just take that out and we are going to lower this down and see how far it goes. All right, so I am about a half of an inch away. I can get more stroke out of this, not a whole lot more, but that is plenty for any CNC router bit that I'm gonna be using because I'm also gonna have the thickness of the material sitting in here as well. Now, Roy, there is one other thing that I want you to take into account when you're working on your spindle and getting it set properly, and that is the balance of the spindle. Spindles on CNC routers have a fair amount of mass, and if your spindle is mounted on the bracket right here where the mass of the spindle or the bulk of the spindle is 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 above the bracket like that or especially if the bracket is here and your spindle's hanging way down that can actually be detrimental to the quality of the cuts that you're going to get out of your machine because you're hanging all that mass out from the bracket either above or below and as it's making its cuts the actual spindle can actually vibrate a little bit and make those cuts look a little choppy so the important part here too is to try to balance your spindle with the weight or the mass, try to split it as much as you can from the top 
and the bottom. So you can see here on the alt mill, the spindle is balanced in between the two and I've got it set up very nicely on this machine. Now, if you need to go and adjust your spindle height to maximize everything, then you need to go and recheck the tram of the machine after you move the spindle because it might go out a little bit and you're changing the way you're clamping it. You're loosening the spindle up. So that could throw it off. Just make sure you double check the tram if you get your spindle uh, adjusted. So just to rehash real quick, you wanna first check your max travel, the physical limits between the carriage and the spoil board. And then you wanna move, move the spindle up as far as you can and give yourself plenty of clearance like between that physical limit and the, the end of the spindle so you can try to get an inch out of it where it's still above the physical limit and then you want to take the bit out and move that spindle down as far as you can. Now if you run into a little bit of a limitation on that where when it's all the way up and you have it uh, with, the, with the max clearance, you've made yourself available to have that max clearance with the Z carriage, and then you bring it down and there's all this space at the bottom when the spindle won't go down anymore, then it's better to bring the spindle down in your adjustment. And here's why. Most projects on CNC routers are fairly thin. Three quarters of an inch, an inch, maybe an inch and a half. And so we don't always need this amount of clearance. In fact, about 90-90% of the time we are doing projects that are only that thick. So you want to make sure, if anything, the spindle is going to come down close to the spoil board and you may not need to worry so much about the physical limits up above. But you definitely want to have a router bit in there just to see what the clearances are going to look like with a tool in there. So I hope, Roy, that answers your question. And for you, my CNC brother or sister, a little bit of a tip that most people don't think about when they're putting their machine together. If you have an insight on this, then please comment down below in the comment section of your thoughts on this. And if this video is helpful, then give me a thumbs up and I hope that you have yourself an awesome CNC day. IDCWoodcraft.com